Hi, everybody. Hi, Nick. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk briefly uh, before Zach, before Mr. Lincoln here gets uh, set up about the Dojo Toolkit. So has anyone here heard of the Dojo Toolkit? Oh, anyone use the Dojo Toolkit? Saw it on the t-shirt. Yeah? <laughs> Hopefully you'll see that again. Hopefully you'll wear a t-shirt like that. <clears throat> um, I'm Nick. I work at SitePen as a software engineer and an instructor where I work with Dojo quite a bit and I teach Dojo uh, workshops across the world. I can say that because I've been to London once. So I'll say across <laughs> the world. Uh, and I also help out with Nebraska JS and Bearing Code in Omaha. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about Dojo, um, which is a JavaScript toolkit. Um, it's not like a, a framework like Angular or um, or Ember or others. It's just a set of utilities and helpers um, and performance tools that you can use to kind of build things your own way. But it's they're very performant and very powerful um, tools and patterns within that to make it easy to to construct applications of any size. Um, it's modular. It uses AMD um, for everything. Has anyone use AMD for required JS? Cool. Uh, it's got its own loader, which I'll kind of show. But um, it's it's basically an AMD loader, uh, just like required JS. It's very performant. It has a, its own build tool, uh, which under the covers will call uh, will, will use um, uh, Uglify or Clojure compiler, and so it does dead code removal and um, minification and concatenation and all of that. And it easily lets us separate um, our concerns, so we can create these templated widgets and use them in a way that um, we're familiar with when we're writing HTML. Dojo is pretty old. It's got a uh, long history. It started around 2004 uh, with the very early versions. I came in and started using it right around the 1.4 era even though they were actually on 1.7. I was, the app I was working on was a 1.4 app, and I upgraded to 1.7, and that's when they switched everything to AMD uh, and then continued on. So it's going strong. It's got a lot of supporters, a lot of um, interest in it. A lot of the apps that are built with it are more corporate apps, it seems, like um, you know hotels and governments and banks and things like that, the, the stuff that you don't hear about on Hacker News. Um, but it's... Still going strong, and uh, it's got a bright future, and a lot of innovation is happening right there as we start looking into the uh, the 1.11 and 2.0 development. <clears throat> so, like I said, it uses AMD uh, or asynchronous module definition um, for all of that. So everything in Dojo is an AMD module, and you can just bring it in and use it just like this. We can bring in language utilities, um, DOM querying different uh, digit widgets and uh, and then plugins as well. Um, it comes with its own loader, but you don't have to use that. If you're already using RequireJS, you can just use the utilities of Dojo with RequireJS, and there's no difference. It'll work just fine out of the box with Require. Uh, the package itself, the Dojo core package, comes with a, a number of utilities, like language utilities, to make working with JavaScript as a language a lot easier. Feature detection, so we can do things like uh, targeted builds or um, you know do easy checks to see if we're actually running on a device that has touch or or, or not, and then we can conditionally um, change our code like that. It's kind of similar to Modernizer, but it's built into the build tool as well. So when we go to build, uh, we can target different builds. Maybe if we want to do like a Cordova sp specific build, we can um, always set the the test for if we have touch to true, and then any code in an else statement in that will just automatically be removed because it'll just assume that we don't need it. Uh, it's got events, uh, aspect-oriented programming, and uh, topics, so a sub, a pub-sub uh, system built into it. The Ajax module is really nice, and it has class emulation with Dojo Declare, uh, and then promises are used for all of the asynchronous modules, uh, asynchronous APIs within it. So we can do cool things like create uh, classes by just using the dojo base declare function. We bring that in and we can do, uh, we can extend other classes and we can mix in uh, other classes as well so we can kind of simulate multiple inheritance with that. And then uh, we can call the super methods within it by just saying this.inherited and passing it in the arguments object. It'll look up through the arguments object um, the super class and then call the sum method in this case on 
awesome mix in, and then on base class if it exists, and all the way back up the chain. So it's really easy to create this, but this is just a helper. Under the covers, it's just really doing uh, prototypal inheritance, so you use it just as you normally would um, down here. It's Ajax, oops. <clears throat> uh, it's got very powerful, a very powerful Ajax module built into it uh, with Dojo request. It's all promise based, so uh, we can just request uh, something, tell it how we want to handle it, and then pass it in a, or uh, use the dot then on the promise to get the success and error callbacks from it. The um, Ajax has uh, two things that we can customize on it. We have these providers and these um, handlers. The handler would be handling the data that's coming back from the server and processing it in some way. So we're telling it to handle it as JSON, and so it'll automatically just parse that out, give us a JSON object or a JavaScript object that we can use. The other one is the provider, and that's how we actually communicate with the server, whatever that may look like. Uh, when we bring in Dojo requests like this, it's actually doing a check to see what kind of environment we're in. If we're in a browser, it's just going to use the XHR provider and do standard XHR. Um, if we're in Node, because you can run Dojo in Node, then it will use the Node one so that we can do um, HTTP requests like that. And we can write our own as well. <clears throat> so this is an example of creating like our own provider in a way that, that is using the XHR provider under the covers. Maybe our app has like uh, a number, every request has to go up with this X authentication header on it. And instead of making sure that every developer remembers to do that, uh, they can use the custom provider instead that will automatically get the token and set the header and then call the regular XHR request so that we can just take care of it in one place, get rid of it, uh, get it out of the way and we don't have to think about it anymore. And then we can use things like a registry so that we can have that provider be used based on the type of URL that we're actually hitting. So if we're hitting, you know, example.com, we want to, uh, our app is not running on example.com, so maybe we want to force it to do JSONP. Well, the, JSON, the script provider does JSONP right out of the box, and we don't have to think about that. Um, in this one, maybe it has to do the request v2, which adds in different headers and then falls back to that. So for each of these, it'll do different... It'll do different types of requests, but we don't have to think about that. It just automatically happens under the covers. So pretty nice um, API for that. Um, all of the data interaction in Dojo kind of centers around these things called object stores. And so we create these stores, and Dojo comes with uh, two of them out of the box, the memory store and a JSON REST store. And then you can create your own. It's, um, I think it's like 20 lines of code, maybe. It's very easy to create your own. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of third-party libraries on GitHub as well. And uh, the nice thing about this is these just handle how we actually get the data and then sort that and query it. And then the, um, the widgets and the other pieces of our application just talk to the store API. And they don't have to worry about where the data is coming from or how to go get the data. They just talk to that, and then they're very modular and reusable uh, because they just have to talk to the store API, and that's it. This is just an example of a simple memory store that uh, that just does holds a, an array in memory in the browser, and then we can do things like query it, so we can get the object with the ID of cherry, and then it's all promise based. So then, when we have the cherry object, we can change its color to blue, and then put that back in the store, and then when it's done, we can pop up and say that we updated the item. But we can use that to build pretty powerful interfaces to our data and then abstract that away from the user interface that we're going to be constructing. And speaking of user interface, uh, Dojo has another package called Digit, and this is its widget library. Um, it's on GitHub as dojo slash digit. And uh, it's just a number of widgets um, and widget systems. It has accessibility as a priority for everything. Internationalization out of the box. If you're familiar with the Require.js i18n plugin, um, we have a nearly identical one in Dojo. Uh, and then it has uh, a number of widgets that are built to talk to those data stores so that they just work regardless of where the data is coming from. And we can do things like templating. Um, we can declaratively create our widgets right within our HTML. So we just give it a data-dojo-type attribute on any HTML element. And then a parser will run through and convert that div into a slider or whatever widget that we want right from there. And the future of that, um, kind of looking forward, will probably be something along the, the lines of web components. But 
that's kind of um, something that we can use today that's pretty nice. It's very nice for users who, uh, or uh, developers or designers who maybe aren't as familiar with all of the JavaScript. They can still use the widgets and implement them in the designs by just throwing them in um, to the templates declaratively. And so in this example, we've just got a custom template that we're creating that um, we're just extending the base, the widget base, and we're saying that this is going to be a templated mixin, and it's going to have widgets within the template. And so if we actually go look at the template itself, in here we've got a div, and it's got a data dojo type of horizontal slider. So that gives us this horizontal slider right there. And then it's just got a div that's the color box. And back in here, we're just saying... Um, right here, we're just watching the value of our slider, and every time the value changes, then we're going to call this slider handler, which just updates the color of this div here. So as I slide this, it just updates each time. <clears throat> so it lets us easily do that. Um, and the way it does that is we just put that into our templates and then we just, it either automatically happens for us with that templated widget, uh, templated mixin that we brought in or uh, we can manually call the, this dojo parser and just tell it to parse the page or parse a specific DOM node and it will go look through all of the attributes on there and convert them to digit widgets uh, as necessary. And then there's a number of third-party libraries as well. This is a, I put this in here because it's a great example of using the store. Um, with this, it's, uh, it's going to create a custom grid for us that's all backed by the store. And when we bring it up, we've got, um, uh, we've got our store right here, a memory store that just has uh, information about these different scientists in it. And then we just pass that store to the grid and we give it a column definition so that we, we tell it what we actually want to show up here. And it easily just creates that and uh, displays that with very little code. Um, you know, we're only on uh, a few lines of code here. But with this, we've got a grid that we can sort. And we can edit the last name fields. And as I edit that, we can watch for changes and update the database. Um, in this case, it's using the memory store, so it's all just happening in the browser. But with the JSON REST store, every time we update that, it could be sending out a request to the server to update that automatically. And same thing with this, we can just throw in widgets in here and, and use them. <clears throat> and so there's a lot that you can do with, with the digit widgets. Um, I, I put this in here to show the theme tester, which is this, um, this app that shows everything that, did, that the digit widget library gives to us. And some of the more powerful things, of course, we've got um, you know, custom checkboxes and radio buttons and buttons uh, so that they're styled consistently across all browsers. Um, but we've also got things like these layout managers that can handle the layout um, and, you know, we can and different, show different content in different ways. So we have this that shows uh, a different view for each of these um, views in the accordion, a tab interface, and we've got the page separated out into regions. We've got this center region here, a sidebar region, and then a footer region down here. And so we can keep it all nice and uh, put together like this. And so we can use things like this to, um, to put together our application. It doesn't really have, it doesn't specify like a, a particular pattern for that, um, but it provides all of the constructs that you need to create your own. So in that sense, Dojo is very unopinionated in the way that you construct your application. Um, but it's very easy to, to create an MVC-like application using composite, um, composite widgets like that, where we have a widget that manages a particular section of the page or an entire page, and then all of the children within it. Uh, it's got its own hash router, uh, just like Backbone uh, and others. And so it easily you can easily integrate with that. Uh, and so it works for applications of all sizes. In the future, um, the work on Dojo 2 has already started. Um, it's at that Dojo slash Dojo 2 repository. Uh, it's actually, right now, completely written in TypeScript. 
Uh, and so that's, that's the experiment going forward is, is playing with TypeScript because that way we can, um, it, it's a lot easier to manage the code and we can um, also target different builds. So if we want to run Dojo for Node, you can run Dojo in Node now, but you have to load Dojo in to load the AMD loader in and then load AMD modules in Node, which is kind of weird. But with TypeScript, you can just um, tell it to compile for CommonJS and it'll work. And probably in the future, ES6 modules and it'll just work. And of course, AMD and it'll just work. So that's it. Um, any questions?